Have you ever wanted to learn how to cook? Well, the professional chefs at The Chef Upstairs are ready to teach you how it's done. Bon appetit! A cooking experience that's interactive, interesting, and intimate, we're at the Chef Upstairs in Toronto, ready to learn about the art of cooking. Julian, you are the executive chef and owner. Tell us about your passion for cooking. Thanks, Christina. Uh, so my passion for cooking started at a very young age. I was cooking in the kitchen with my mom, probably since the age of five, and then actually started working in my first restaurant at the age of 11 uh, for about four years part-time after school and on weekends. I worked in my family restaurant called Panzer's Deli. Um, I'm actually now the fourth generation owner of that restaurant. So my history and my passion uh, for cooking starts very, very early. Yeah, cooking is in your blood, you would say, basically. And my blood, unfortunately, is in the cooking too, but that's a different story. <laughs> well, okay, so you're not the only chef here. There's actually multiple chefs that work at The Chef Upstairs. Everyone's coming with their own backgrounds, which really helps with the cooking classes that you offer here. People can come and take your cooking classes and experience every type of culture. Tell us about them. Well, I want to make sure that people get the full gamut of cooking when they come here and that there's a variety of menus and ethnic cuisines for people to choose from. So our standard cooking classes, which we host like three times a week at each location, like just last week we had Spanish tapas, we had Taste of India, we had a Thai Southeast Asian kind of Vietnamese cooking class, we had a classic French, we had an Italian. We want to offer people variety because cooking is variety. And like in this city we live in, diversity is everything. For the fancier folk out there, or maybe someone who wants to surprise their loved one with a very fancy dinner, you offer private chef experiences. How does that work? Well, our private chef at home is a huge service that we offer. And the way I like to describe it as be a guest in your own home, like actually be a guest. Cause me, I've always been the host and never the guest, like especially in my own house. But even when I go to people's homes, I always feel like, oh, how can I help? Let me come in the kitchen. So we make sure that, that doesn't happen anymore. We send a chef, we send a server, bartender, whatever you need to host your event. Um, beforehand, our events manager has discussed with you every way that we can make this event special for you and how we can make it unique and memorable. From choosing your own custom menu, custom cocktails, making sure the flow of service is exactly how you want it. So from an intimate dinner for two for an anniversary or a dinner party for six, you know, five year best well your significant other and then four of your best friends, uh, or even a backyard barbecue for 40 guests. Uh, we are full service start to finish. Um, another motto we have is we'll leave your kitchen cleaner than the way we've got oh, it. We love that. <laughs> when you don't have to do dishes at the end of the night, that's I think even better than anything else like, that you could ask. We are literally taking the trash out and sweeping your floor for you. Wow. Start to finish. We want to get to know Chef Julian a little bit better, so we've prepared some rapid fire questions. Let's go. Favorite comfort food? Carbs. <laughs> Favorite fancy meal to cook? Ooh, uh, seared foie gras. <laughs> okay, I don't even know what that is. When you don't feel like cooking, what quick meal do you buy? Mmm, Dr. Ecker's frozen pizzas, 425 for 14 minutes. Okay, I love that you gave me instructions on how to cook it. <laughs> Most overrated ingredient? Ooh, truffle oil. Okay. Most underrated ingredient? Mmm. <sighs> Turmeric. Okay. If you only could have one utensil in your house, what would that utensil be? Silicone spatula. Love that. I have one of those. Red meat or white meat? White meat. Pork all the way. Cake or pie? Pie. Okay. What kind of pie? Mm, cherry pie. Thank you. Amazing. So glad to learn all about you. Thank you. So just to clarify, Julian, we're not actually cooking today. No, we're not cooking. We're just gonna show you all the prep work that it takes to get these vegetables ready for roasting or making soup or sauteing. 
It's basically the, the hard part. The yeah. easy part's cooking with these. Okay, all right. So what's the first vegetable we're going to be using today? Or are they all vegetables even? <laughs> you, you gotta stop pointing that knife <laughs> at me, all right? I'm putting it down. <laughs> there should be a rule. If you're a hand talker, the knife stays on the board Got till it. we're ready. It's on the board. <laughs> all right. Before we even start chopping, I gotta show you how to properly hold a knife. Okay. Okay. So everyone wants to grab their knife like this. Which I was just doing. <laughs> the problem is you have all the weight now on the front of your knife and no weight on the back. What you want to do is achieve balance. You want to have more balanced handle on the knife. So we're actually going to move our hand up. Oh. And I pinch my thumb and index at the base of the blade. My almost kind of like touching to the, the handle. Okay. And then three fingers on the handle. Okay. okay. We're going to want to cut it this way, but let's make it even easier for ourselves. We're going to cut it in half. Okay. Notice every time I cut, I'm going forward and down at the same time. Mm. The knife has a blade. Use it. It's not a hammer, it's a knife. Okay? Okay. I showed you what to do with this hand, your knife hand. The other hand is just as important. Grip your carrot, all the same. Push those knuckles out. Here, we're kind of measuring that cut and we're protecting the fingertips here as well. We're guiding the knife. I love that part. We could do either strips, like so. Kind of like fries, but here. Yeah, mm -hmm. fries, matchsticks. If you want to do a dice, we just cross those matchsticks. Mm -hmm. I'll save you some of this, okay? okay? And then, just like my namesake, Julien, this takes a little more focus, a little more practice, but it's all the same, those knuckles, have to be measuring your cuts and guiding your knife. It's like an art. Look at those. Those are okay. beautiful. Cool. Every action you do should be like methodical. No wasted movements and nice and like precise. And I think it comes with time, like muscle memory, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. You want to try this out? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Okay. I don't know if mine are going to be as beautiful as yours. That's but... okay. Make like a C. C for Christina. Yeah. Kind of. And okay. then that thumb is hiding. Okay. And stabilizing your carrot. Good. So pick your thickness. Good. You're going a little match sticky now. So I got my two match sticks. Right. Nice. If this was so easy for you, then I'd be out of a job. Okay. Look right. at these Beautiful. Julians. All right. So tuck a couple of them over here and let me see you cross them into that brunoise. Okay, and the knuckles become even more important here as you're making those small cuts. This took me years this to be so able to hard. do. This is so hard. Years. Oh my years God. of practice. How do you, like, so uh, really maybe... Really good for your first shot at this. Pick it all up. We're not scraping plastic, but we're also not pushing the knife into our hand. Nope. Very good. And I'm sure that took you some right time here. too. Beautiful oh. carrot cuts. Guys, check this out. Well. All in a day's work. Well, Julian, thank you so much for teaching me some essential knife skills. I'm gonna go home and feel so much more confident in the kitchen. If you wanna up your cooking game or have Chef Julian come to your home and cook for you, head to thechefupstairs.com. Thin a slice.